Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who are new here, welcome. My name is Chelsea and yeah, we're gonna just chat right now because I need to do some laundry. Well, I need to fold some laundry and here's the thing you guys, if you're new here, you don't know this, but I am a working mom. So I have one daughter, she's 20 months and I love YouTube so much, but it's not my full-time job. I also love my full-time job. I'm in marketing. I, I love what I do. So I have no plans on making YouTube my full-time gig, but I love the community I've built here on YouTube with, you know, the IVF community and infertility and all that stuff, as well as working moms and I don't know, whoever else watches my channel, but um, it is hard to do both full-time be a mom or like full-time working be a mom and do YouTube and everything else I want to do in my life. Um, so I decided I'm going to stop trying to make my YouTube videos so perfect, meaning a full face of makeup, perfect lighting, um, perfect script, all that stuff. Um, because it's just too hard to be able to do, you know, a couple of videos a week, which is sort of my goal. Um, it's too hard to do that and do all the other things I want to do every day. So I'm going to just do a little laundry chat and you guys can sit with me and fold laundry so I can get this done. Um, and then I can get back to my full-time job that I got to get back to after this break. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this type of video. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, I wanted to chat with you guys about my life, what's going on. Um, you know, we're, we're gearing up to do IVF again. I mean, that is a question we get asked a lot is when are we going to start? And I've kind of explained that in the last couple videos. We're hoping to start here in a couple months. And I've explained that, um, I want to give myself a shot at trying to get pregnant naturally because we have an explained unexplained infertility so I want to give myself a chance to see if maybe within a few months we could get pregnant on our own now that I've already had a kid um, I did get pregnant via IVF the first time but I'm really hoping that you know I mean I'm not really hoping let's be honest I'm really just planning on doing a frozen embryo transfer with one of the two embryos we have left over but it would be cool to like get pregnant naturally and not know the gender of our baby because um, we do know the two genders of the embryos that are frozen. They're girls. I've talked about that a lot here on my channel so I'm not keeping it a secret from any of you newcomers. Um, and I'm sorry if you can hear my laundry folding. I don't know if the audio is going to pick that up but anyway I'm sorry for that. <laughs> It'll just be like one of those things we have to work out. One of those kinks. Um, but yeah, so I got my IUD out and sorry, this is going to be TMI for, I don't know if any guys watch my channel or if you're just not interested in this kind of stuff, you probably shouldn't watch me because I talk about this kind of stuff. So anyway, um, I got my IUD out last month, the very end of the year, or was it the very first of this month? I think it was like the first of this month. And so we had, you know, this month to try and I wasn't really expecting anything. Um, and you know, Aunt Flo showed up today and you know, I wasn't like disappointed or anything. I was just like, Oh, okay. You know, um, cause I really didn't have like these high hopes that I was going to get pregnant the first month of not being on birth control anymore. And, um, if you're wondering why I got on an IUD, I got an I on an IUD right after my daughter was born because I've heard so many people that um, have gotten pregnant, like one of my good friends got pregnant uh, right after she had, like five months after she had her baby through IVF. And obviously that would be amazing to get pregnant naturally like that, even if it was so soon after um, having another baby. However, after I had my daughter, I was really just worried about postpartum depression and just, I didn't actually get it, but I just, I don't know. I wasn't in the best mental state. I just wasn't sure how stable I was going to be. So I was like, yeah, let's make sure to get on birth control because even though I needed IVF to get pregnant the first time, 
like I said, we have undiagnosed infertility, unexplained infertility. So, like, I don't know. Maybe I, I could have gotten pregnant really fast. Does that happen? That seems to happen to people. Anyway, so that is why I did get on an IUD for anyone who's wondering that. I don't know if you're wondering that, but I just thought I would explain that. <laughs> so, anyway, we've got one month of trying behind us. We're probably going to try two to three months before calling our fertility doctor and setting up a frozen embryo transfer and I've talked a little bit about my concerns with you know what's going on with the pandemic and everything and um, I'm a little more confident in myself being able to handle uh, the hiccups that come with you know not being able to have Eric get appointments and you know things are just different this time around so I have come to understand uh that that's a thing and I can I don't know I think I'll be uh okay with that I won't be too stressed out so in other news I mean we don't just talk about infertility on this channel but I mean it's a big part of what I talk about um but I wanted to chat with you guys about something because I don't know I just want to get your guys' opinion on this. I lately have stumbled across some commentary channels here on YouTube and you know I'll be cleaning my house or whatever doing stuff around the house and I'll listen to these commentary channels and I find them very fascinating because a lot of times I don't agree with the perspectives you know the points that they're making about different topics. And they talk about everything from you know like pop culture stuff to things that are happening on YouTube. Um, I've mentioned the anti-MLM uh, community here before and I came across a commentary channel and they talk about, and if you want to check them out, it's the Dad Challenge Podcast. And I don't like love his presentation all the time because he's kind of snarky and kind of mean and rude to people, <laughs> I think, that he talks about. But I think his intentions are good and what he does is he lately has been really hooked on family vlog channels and talking about them. You know, if you if you watch any family vlog channels here on YouTube, then you know what I'm talking about. I mean, I'm kind of a family vlog channel in a way. I never um, set out to be that way. It was really just all about documenting infertility and helping to have a community out there that would support me, but also I could support so that I wouldn't feel so alone and that other people wouldn't feel so alone when going through the challenges of infertility. So anyway, before finding his channel, I have been debating about, do I show Ray? Do I focus more of my content on her life? Is that what people want to see? But then I'm like, even if they want to see that, am I okay with that? I don't, I don't know. One, I, I withheld from showing her a lot and, in the beginning because I don't know like my channel is based a lot on infertility and I didn't want to like shove my baby in people's faces that are trying to get pregnant and you know I, I just wasn't sure like how to navigate that and then I started feeling less and less comfortable with putting her face out there for everyone to see and just like all of her life um, because, you know, it's like she can't decide right now if that's what she wants. And I don't know, just for privacy reasons and security and safety, I just didn't feel good about it. Um, and there's sometimes even when I myself just like get nervous about putting myself out there for safety reasons. And, um, I go back and forth with the whole idea of like what it even means to be an an influencer or a youtuber and like sometimes it sounds like oh that would be so fun to just continue to share my life and make it my full-time job actually I've never let's be honest I really have never wanted to make this my full-time job but you know like it's a good side hustle and don't get me wrong I do make money from YouTube and it's a it's a good little chunk it's nothing huge I definitely don't make as much as even other people that have the same amount or less of subscribers as me um, there's people out there that make more than me that have less subscribers because they just do more content that, or like more niched or um, trending content. And my niche is pretty specific with infertility, so and IVF and all that stuff. So I I do make money for my YouTube channel, but I don't. Um, it's not like 
you know, anything huge and significant, but it's a good little chunk. And I just, I don't, sometimes I wonder if like, if I were to put more of Ray out there and like our family life and stuff, like if that did really well and like my channel started to grow and I'd make more money. I don't know. I just feel like, am I exploiting my family for money? Because that's kind of what these commentators talk about on, about these family vlog channels is these family vlog channels are like exploiting their children for money on YouTube. And anyway, I don't know. I just, I totally see where they're coming from on that topic, but I don't know. It's, I feel like most people start out with the best of intentions. And then when they start seeing the money and everything come through it, they can, you can easily get greedy, I guess. Um, but I would hope that most people aren't exploiting their children for money and views and, you know, brand deals and stuff with YouTube. I don't know. It's just been an interesting conversation that has been happening on YouTube, at least with a few commentary channels that I watch. And I just wonder what your guys' opinions are on that. I would love to hear, you know, in the comments below. Tell me, do you watch any family vlog channels um, with my channel personally? Do you wish I showed Ray more or talked about her life more. I mean, I've done a ton of like updates on her when she was a baby and it's always come from a place of helping other moms though or like anything that I would search on YouTube once I felt like more of an expert on it, not that I'm ever like the expert on things. I just, you know, like with breastfeeding, once I felt like I was more comfortable with it and could give my opinions or not even opinions, just like I could share my experience with people. I just felt like that would help other people because I would dig and dig and dig for every type of breastfeeding video I could find on YouTube. Um, basically every video I've made, it's because I searched that video. Sorry, the garbage truck is distracting me. Um, what was I saying? I'm talking about, <laughs> um, yeah, I want your opinions on, you know, family vlog channels and do you guys follow them and what kind of stuff do you watch on YouTube because I was saying that basically every video I've made is a video that I've searched for on YouTube and so I just feel like especially like that's how I started my YouTube channel with IVF I was like I can't find enough IVF videos like honestly I would watch every single thing I could possibly find on it because I just wanted the support and I wanted um, the knowledge and just to know what to expect um, with my own journey. So that's why I filmed it because I was like, I know this can help someone. And it was also cool to be able to now look back on my journey. Anyway, that is what has been on my mind lately. The whole family vlogging situation. Again, please share your opinions in the comments below. I always really appreciate your guys' perspectives. Um, I see both sides of, you know, like um, family vlogging can be very helpful to other people to see um, or even just entertaining or whatever, but there's a lot of things that family vloggers share that are like, um, you know, useful tips on how to manage your family, how to have fun with your family, all that kind of stuff. Um, but then it can, I, I do think it can get to the point where you're exploiting your children. Like there are videos I've seen from family vloggers, like just even just the type, like the clickbaity titles or thumbnails that are like, um, I don't know, exploiting your kids' uh, experiences with like their first kiss or I don't know, I don't, I'm not into that. I don't like that. Um, but yeah, like I said, there are some good things about family vlog channels in my opinion. Anyway, yeah, so <laughs> look how cute this shirt is, by the way, this little outfit. Um, my friend, she got it at, I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, she got it at Target for Ray for Christmas and it is so cute. Makes me wish we could go to Disneyland. Although, to be honest, um, Eric and I are planning a Disney World trip here soon, hopefully. You know, it's not 100% set in stone, but we're not taking Ray because 
we have decided that we're not taking our kids to Disneyland until they are old enough to remember it. So in my opinion, that's five years old or older because I don't know. We just, it's expensive. And I think you have to pay for them after three years old, I think. Anyway, um, and so I remember going when I was five. So that's why I'm kind of like, I think we'll take them when they're like five or six. But yeah, so Eric and I are gonna try to go to Disney World and we are just gonna go, us too, because we've never been. We've been to Disneyland a bunch and we love it. Um, we just love being able to run around the park together, eat a bunch of food at the park. We love all the food there. And then just like go on ride after ride after ride. And anyway, it's really fun. So yeah, and then I think it will be really fun, of course, with Ray um, one day, but yeah, until she can really keep up with us and appreciate and <laughs> remember it, we're just not going to take her. And I feel like so many people disagree with me on that, and that's totally fine um, because I can see why it would be really fun to take your kids no matter what age they are because, you know, they just, they see the magic of Disney and you get to see that through their eyes and that would be really fun. But at the same time, it's just not how we do Disneyland, especially with Star Wars, you know, having Galaxy's Edge there. It's like so fun for Eric and I because we're huge Star Wars fans, but we will definitely take Ray soon, but just not in the next four years or so. We'll probably take her, you know, when she's five or six. So anyway, okay. So I'm almost done folding laundry. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to chat with you guys about. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Please leave your comments down below, especially about the whole fam family vlogging situation. I just would love to hear your perspectives. Um, I still don't know what I'm gonna do. I talked to Eric a little bit about it and you know, he's not uncomfortable with showing Ray. I mean, I'm sure he has boundaries the same as I do of you know certain things we wouldn't show to the internet and to the world, but he has seen how my channel has really helped other people. And you know, maybe there are people that could benefit from learning more about like Ray and I don't know, and our family dynamic and everything, but I don't know. I'm just really curious what you guys think about all of that. Thank you so much for hanging out with me while I fold laundry and I can't wait to chat with you guys again. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.